Alrighty. What's up guys? Long time no update. So been busy. I promise I haven't been slacking too much here. The uh, last few weeks, I feel like I always say that. The last few weeks I've been uh, working on the Audi project and got some parts in, got some designs finalized, you know, 3D printed crap ton of stuff here. 3D printed a whole flywheel on my CR10 here, which barely freaking fits on this thing, but it fits. So, printed that thing out, confirmed fitment, it all looked good. So, went ahead and uh, bought some material, got it made out of aluminum, and yes. This is the final product, or at least for right now until <laughs> I make some other design change. But no, all jokes aside, this thing is actually really, 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 really well made. Everything came out perfect on it. This is our new snout is what I'm going to call this. It's basically a pilot bearing extension. This is the same thing Audi, our same type of design Audi uses in the OEM. Um the OEM flex plate, which I don't even I don't even know if I got that thing around here anywhere. But got that thing all mounted. Um had some trouble with my adapter plate, so that's why I got this thing on here right now. The uh the clearance between the flywheel and the adapter plate is N OK. So I had a feeling that was going to be the case, but basically this ring gear is slightly, uh, slightly larger diameter than what I was expecting, and the clearance is just not there. So the uh, the adapter plate I have, um, yeah, it's not really going to work, and I've got some other design changes for it. So a new one is going to be made. And I think I've got the design already completely updated for this, but it's taking a little bit longer to get these parts made than I thought. But yeah, this is research and development essentially at this point, because yeah, there's a reason this hasn't been done before. I do have starter mount here as well, but I don't have all the pieces for it, so I don't want to show that. Um, let me see if I can set this thing on the stand real quick. So yeah, I bought an actual professional stand, like a, like a real YouTuber. Upgraded the camera, upgraded the mic. Please let me know if you guys think it sounds like crap, if you think it sounds... Watch out, Roxy. Watch out, sweetie. Go. Let me know if you think it sounds okay, or if it sounds bad, if it looks bad, if there's any suggestions. Yeah, I'm not really the artistic type when it comes to stuff like this. But, I was told that I need to upgrade, so upgrade is what I did. And this thing's pretty slick, so I can adjust this, get it exactly where I want, so it's an upgrade. It wasn't too expensive, but... So, this is a alternator out of a Audi A8, I think. This one was, I bought this on eBay. The freaking seller didn't package it nicely and it got beat to shit. But, it's at least good enough for mock-up purposes. I like this alt alternator better because it's a lot easier to fabricate a bracket for this thing because the bolt holes are on the front and it's just less complicated to make a bracket for it and it's pretty damn difficult without measuring this thing I don't even know you'd, you'd have to make like a, a jig or a fixture I should say to be able to really measure this because it's so difficult to measure where these pulley center lines are at in comparison to the mounting holes there 
So this makes it a little bit simpler because I can 3D print it, check the height or check the alignment of the pulleys, and if shit hits the fan and I really have to, if I get this made out of metal, I could put some washers behind here and tweak the spacing a little bit. So, well that and the fact that this is, how many amps is this? I think this is a hundred and, shit, what does it say? That's 130 amp, and then this guy I think is 180. So, nope, I lied, it's 220 amps. So this thing is an air-cooled 220 amp alternator. You could basically power a water pump, auxiliary water pump, uh, fuel pumps, a surge tank pump, and every single other electronic you could ever possibly want on a race car or even a daily driver and have some headroom. It's air-cooled, simple. These things are relatively cheap. You can get parts for them, so I figure this is a good compromise. So the design you see here now is what I've come up with. I think it's the simplest solution to get some actual parts made and double check everything's correct. I've, I've went through multiple revisions for this thing. Um, even though it's mounted, you know, like I said, on the front face here, the LS, the normal LS blocks, they don't have any provisions on the front for mounting, which I, I don't know. When I first designed my, uh, my original bracket on the LS4, the LS4 has got some extra holes here for mounting. So yeah, there's some upsides and downsides, you know, these blocks are much more common, a lot easier to find. Um, you can get different components for them, like the crankshaft on the LS4 is very specific and spacing is different on it. So you can't get strokers, you can get replacement cranks, yada yada yada. So it makes more sense in my opinion to develop this, these parts to be able to work on these blocks. Because the LS4 is just, uh, it's an odd duck and yeah, it is what it is. But the good thing about these blocks compared to the LS4, because the LS4 does not have mounting provisions. It's only got, I think, two on the side here, which I could look if, I, if anybody really wants to know. But the standard LS blocks, they have one, two, three, four, five, five mounting bosses here on the side of the block. So you can definitely get more creative, but this is the latest concept I've come up with. I think it should be manufacturable. And it should work, it should be plenty strong. And the faces of these bosses are machined. So everything should be held square. Um, and one of the ways that I'm checking that is actually with this little piece here. I mean, if I can get it in focus. So I basically 3D modeled the grooves on the serpentine and used a, I think this is 556 or 223 uh, bore sight, which is held pretty concentric from the laser to the OD of this. Put some provisions in this. So basically what that allows me to do is put that right there in the center of the, uh, crank pulley this thing's kind of i don't know it needs to tweaked a little bit because really i need to pick up all six of these ribs and it's just the four right now i can get it on center and it's good enough for checking this but it needs some improvements but what that allows me to do then is check my alignment to my other pulleys which i know it's like pretty close but now I know that this, uh, this whole alternator is actually a little bit too far back that way. I would say like half of a millimeter. You know, there's some slop in these tolerances. I think my 3D printer when I measured, it's like plus or minus 0.1 is what I'm capable with this thing. So 
like I said, once I get this thing made out of metal, I can maybe adjust the tolerances. Once I get some more precise parts, I can adjust the tolerances with washers, update the prints, and have it made correctly. All right, so now I've got a new serpentine tensioner here, which if you watch my previous videos, you'll know how the belt is being routed. But essentially, you've got your power steering Audi pump. It's mounted there. This is the Audi AC compressor mounted on the side, which I'll show you here in a second. There's going to be an idler there. Alternator's obviously over there. And then that bracket's got another provision for a additional idler. So that should completely take care of the belt squealing issue like you guys saw on the first video I've, I posted. And should be reliable as an OEM setup then. So basically I'm using an OEM GM truck AC compressor bracket which this motor actually came with which is how I got the idea for it but um, essentially the AC compressor brackets got two bolts that are threat or two drill tap holes that are going to be uh, mounted to this plate right here so that makes uh, the face of the pulley parallel and then here on the side of the block it's got another boss that goes through here, it's just a through hole, and then that's gonna pick up on another detail right there. So the Audi alternator, these bolts right here are actually the exact same spacing. So believe it or not, I think this is a Valio alternator, or I'm not sure, but it's evidently the same manufacturer that makes them for General Motors because yeah, the bolt hole spacing is exactly the same. Now, at least on the front, I should say. There is one bolt right there, which I still need to get some better measurements because I think we'll make a, a riser here and then just another plate so you can at least pick up it, uh, mount that thing in three points. But yeah, so those are the updates I have for you guys. Uh, the big holdup right now is the adapter plate, which, like I said, I think I've got the design all done for that. And uh, hopefully going to be sending that out for quotes uh, tomorrow, I would hope. And no idea how long it's going to take for somebody to make that. I wouldn't think it would be too complicated, but yeah, then I can... Uh, Hopefully get this thing back together. If anybody wants a link to the drawings for that, um, I'll try to put that in the description if somebody comments and asks for it. Um, I'll probably put it on either GrabCAD or Thingiverse. Um, it does need some improvement, but it's functionally good enough and this costs like $10 for this laser and I don't know, nothing, hardly anything for the 3D printed parts. But, yep, yeah, it's coming along. Just gotta get some parts. So, yeah, that's about all I've got for you guys. To be honest, this, uh, this has taken me quite a bit longer than I had expected, but, it's better to take my time and get all these things correct and uh, you know make the parts once or make them multiple times on my 3D printer I should say rather than make them multiple times out of metal which is much more expensive yep so alright guys like comment subscribe share 